Mike, and the idea that this is a state court that says it's bringing a case with regards to a federal action that didn't occur, and it's an acting judge who donated to the current president who is challenged by Donald Trump. I'm sorry, as a layman, it just seems insane to me. It is insane because you have a businessman settling a routine nuisance claim with a non-disclosure agreement and a confidentiality agreement. I've been a lawyer for 20 years. I've done hundreds of these settlements. I, I, apparently, I'm a felon because I've done these settlements of these nuisance claims. You put it in your books as a legal expense. I don't know what you would call it other than a legal expense. And so Trump put it in his private books as a legal expense in 2017, and that somehow affected the campaign in 2016. And then these legal expenses were somehow a New York state misdemeanor that morphed into 34 felony counts, but they haven't told Trump exactly how or why. They haven't told Trump the legal allegations after his trial is over. Right. This point by Mike, has, this shocked me in the courtroom as, as I'm listening, that they're saying something happened after the election with filing an expense right. and somehow what happened after the election was election interference, as if that that filing of an expense went back in a time machine. I mean, this is just laughable, isn't it? It, it is. It makes absolutely no sense. And keep in mind, you look, you were there. Who were the final two witnesses, right? Former paralegal, former legal advisor to uh, Mr. Cohen. And what did they say? They said that Michael Cohen had told them repeatedly, repeatedly, that Donald Trump knew nothing about this payment. That was also an essential element of Bragg's case. And yet here you had uh, two witnesses saying Donald Trump didn't know anything about this. And then, Mike, this document of which I was informed on Tuesday when I went to the court, 30 page federal document from the Southern District of New York, listing all of Michael Cohen's crimes, not just perjury, but grand larceny, which was suppressed as evidence by Juan Merchan. H how is Alvin Bragg not culpable for not charging his star witness with grand larceny instead of making him a witness? And, and why would a judge suppress a federal court document that goes directly to the credibility or lack thereof of the prosecution's witness. Well, I think we're talking as if this were a fair trial in America, as opposed to a third world Marxist hellhole of New York City with Juan Mershon, who's corrupt, whose daughter is raising millions of dollars off this case, off this Alvin Bragg who campaigned on getting Trump, Colangelo getting sent from the Biden Justice Department, uh, th this is a rigged process. It is a joke. But it, the problem is, is it's not funny because they're going to try to put President Trump in prison. All right. On, on that last point, thank you, Mike, for reminding us. As a former DOJ uh, member of federal government and an FEC commissioner, can you just comment hands on, is it standard for the third highest person at the Federal Department of Justice to just slide sideways and downwards and become a line prosecutor in Manhattan? Isn't that a little weird? It's, it's bizarre. The, uh, he was the acting associate attorney general. It makes him the number three top official at the U.S. Justice Department. He had to take a pay cut, a pay cut to go to Manhattan to prosecute this case as an assistant prosecutor. Uh, that tells you, I believe, that the Biden White House's fingers are all over this and involved in pushing and helping Alvin Bragg uh, bring this prosecution against their opponent. Yeah, as President Trump says, these are Biden's trials. These are all Biden's trials. God bless you both. Please check out heritage.org, join the conservative mothership and the article3project.org. Keep telling the truth, gentlemen. Next up, they never give up. The latest member of Team Trump under